Welcome to a special bonus edition of Scarlet's Fever with me, Lee G. Joining me today, as always, is Big M. Mart, how are we? I'm good, mate. I'm good. How are you doing? Yeah, good. So, so we don't normally do bonus pods with just me and you, but we had some stuff through yesterday that we thought was worth kind of having a chat about. So, why don't you kick off with what you know about Clethy and the the EDC, the Elite Development Championship? Is it EDC, Elite Development Championship? It's not a league, it's a championship, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not too sure what the acronym is, but uh, we, we'll find out eventually, I suppose. Uh, obviously, we, we spoke about this uh, several months ago when the news first popped that Lethe were withdrawing from the Premiership for this year. And there was always the thoughts of what are the connotations of that moving forward. And at the time, uh, I don't know if it was said publicly, but privately, you know, John Daniels was uh, under the impression that each region would get to choose a mm. team to represent them in this new elite competition. And yesterday, an email was sent out to all the member clubs of the WIU with the criteria to basically apply to be in this new league. And the very first uh, bit of criteria, there's only three, very brief. Uh, the first one is the applicant club must be a participant in and complete the WRU league structure in the 2023-2024 rugby season. So that immediately means Finefi RFC will not be eligible to enter the new elite league. Mm. And that's, you know, either something's gone wrong at the start where, you know, the WIU had said something and then changed their mind or somebody's influenced something in between there and here. But either way, it's a bit of a shambles uh, from both from a Finefi point of view and from the WIU point of view. Uh, it is. I I don't want to say it because I I, I tried my best not to swear, so uh, <laughs> I'm 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 going to avoid that for today. Mm. But no, it is it's an abs it is an absolute mess. And for those who have been brought up with Flair Three, you know, live around the area, and I I don't mean this for all Scarlet fans because Scarlet fans you know cover all of David and even further. But those who are in the heart of Flair Three, this this is going to hurt a hell of a lot. Mm. Mm. And it was something that could have easily been avoided because I, I know the game is financially tight at the minute, but it was for the sake of £100,000 that was the reason why she actually withdrew. Mm. And I think it kind of shows where we are, you know, in West Wales, in all honesty. You know, there's, there's a lot of changes afoot. There's a lot of, you know... We talk regularly about teams like Whitland that used to be top of the tree. Uh, you know, Tenby down our neck of the woods um, many years ago used to be top of the tree. And then now, nowhere near where they used to be. And then you've got sides like Crimmich and Newcastle Emlyn coming through and developing good players. And, you know, it, it, it is very much a change of footing, if you like, in in, in West Wales. But you would have thought that Lethley would have survived that. You would have thought that Lethley would have been still at the top. And it baffles me that this has happened. In all honesty, it does. It baffles me that we've got to a stage where the Lethley club, I don't know, might, is it going to come back into, you know, because the, the, the EDC license is a three year trial or uh, officially isn't it it's a three-year experiment to see if this does work and then they'll, they'll adjust it from there and it's between eight and ten clubs so then when i actually said you know if there's ten clubs that will fit the criteria then ten clubs enter so you know there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff there that, that could have been good for for Lethley and for for the scarlet so yeah i just uh, you know, where do they come back in? Do they come back in championship? Do they come back in, you know, like we saw with Saracens? Do they come back into the, the bottom tier, Division 4, as it'll be next year? You know, where does Leslie come back in? Well, that 
that that is the question, and that is the one that I think everyone wants answered first and foremost, because we we know they can't come back in at the top. We know that's not even an option, mm-hmm. and I think it's I think it's less of a point of where they're going to come back in tour. Is are they going to come back? Because mm-hmm. without the top tier of semi professional rugby, or, or, as you want to call it. Hmm. What is their fourth in Italy? I mean, for me personally, I would like them to revert to uh, the community club that they were before regionalism because there hasn't been a mini and junior setup involved in Schleffi in God knows how long. And they they just seem to have whittled away over the last 20 years. It just hmm. seems that all the aspects have pulled towards a club you know, all your volunteers, all, you know, all your, your minis and juniors, players, parents, the people that fill your club out, that make your club that thriving place where you want to be, you want to be a part of. Clinetti has completely lost that in the last 20 years. Mm. So for me, I want I want to see them re, not, not even play a park of stars if it means it, if it means they got to come and borrow and you know, ground share with someone, you know, even if they came back to Stradley Park with Fletchley Wanderers for a little bit or, or whatever, there's loads of pitches around. Mm. Even if they started back at the bottom, just try and rebuild that community feel with them because that's completely gone. Mm. And and I think that's probably a, um, a, a best option, uh, in all honesty, because for me, and, uh, you know, I've said this, quite a few times and I've tried explaining to people and they don't understand it. For me, the Scarlets and Clinetti Rugby Club are, are separate. You know, they, they, they are they are two separate entities and I, I, I'm not a Clinetti Rugby Club supporter, but I am a Scarlet supporter. So, you know, for me, when people call me a Turk, they go, no, that's a Clinetti Rugby Club. But, you know, that's part of the identity of Clearly, rugby club. That's part of the heritage that was that built that club, and and the two were separate. You know, the the, the scarlets are a a multi site, if you like. It, you know, it covers a, a big area. It reaches out to Pembrokeshire to Ceredigion, and and Llanelli never did and never would. You know, it's got no need to. So rebuilding from the bottom, I think, would actually be good. For Clenetti and good for the Scarlets because, like you say, you separate the two. And and I know there's a lot of stuff inside the Scarlets about the Clenetti heritage and you know the win over the All Blacks and uh, the Gates from Stradley and all of this kind of stuff. And and you know I think that there's got to be some kind of agreement between the Scarlets and and Clenetti that this is you know this is the historic part of the Scarlets if you like. But I think the best thing for Clenetley now is, like you say, to go back to being a community club and to build from the bottom. And I don't think it will take too long. I genuinely don't. There's, there's so many talented players around that will want to come and play for Clenetley. Um, I think by the time we get to the end of this three-year EDC, Clenetley will be in a place where actually, yeah, they can be in the next round. But like you say, it, it, the plan for this year is for Clenetley to 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 do the friendly games uh, against touring sides and English sides and and this that and the other. You know, how does that work if you're not playing regular weekly games? You know, it's yeah, it it, it just basically turns into a, an extension of the Scarlet's Academy if it stays that way. I, th- I think the important part that we all need to be wary of is right now. There's been no announcement from the Scarlets, no announcement from whoever's left with left the RFC. So it is, even though we've had this news, we've had it confer- essentially confirmed from the WRU that it's not happening. We still need that, you know, that bit of confirmation from the club of what they are going to be doing. Could they appeal to try and get through? I mean, I, I suppose that's something that is possible. Mm. But so, until we get that, it is no way to know what is going to happen, and I think that is probably the most disappointing part of everything. Mm. You know, obviously, you know the the hierarchy at the, at the Scarlet's actually would have had this email yesterday, 
So they would have known this is going to be public knowledge. So mm. it's time to put out a statement and say what your plans are. Even mm. if it's just to say, uh, you know, we've had the email from the WIU, et cetera, et cetera. This is what we're going to do. And just be done at that. Mm. You know, it, it's just a, a simple little statement. Okay, uh, we've accepted the WIU's email. Uh, we now acknowledge that Clefty will not be able to take part in the competition. Mm. We are still reviewing possibilities for future. Or we don't agree with the requirements that the WIU have set out and we will be appealing them through uh, wh whatever means there are. Mm. So it, it, there's still a lot of limbo, which it, when there's no rugby going on, as in no no club rugby for Clefty, no professional you know, competition rugby for the Scarlets, it makes mm. you wonder well, what what are they doing because the the media teams are not up to anything that comes on the thing. So why are you not nipping this in the bud before people like us have a chance to really have all these conversations and have all these different opinions and all different mm. ideas about what could possibly happen? And but this is something that we've spoken about before that you know sometimes rugby clubs and it does seem to be in West Wales where, where this is is quite bad. We we don't want to talk about the bad stuff. We don't want to put it out in 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 into the public and go. Do you know what? Here's something that might not be great, but let's talk about it. Let's work our way through it. Do, do you know what I mean? It it does seem like you're only allowed to talk about the fantastic stuff, and and actually, there's stuff going on that people aren't happy about, like you know, decision to not field a a Slenetti team this year. You know, this is this is the other bit that annoys me now with the WIU. This that statement comes out when the 2023-24 season has already started. Yeah. So if that statement had come out and if that had been made clear in June, yeah, or May or June, then they could have said, right, actually we weren't planning on putting a side in this year, but if we want to make the EDC, then we have to put a side in. Do you know what I mean? And, and actions could have been taken, albeit it could have been, you know, a bit scratch to, to start with, but something could have happened. To put that out when you're, we're only six weeks into the, five, six weeks into the league and saying, yeah, you've had to have done it here. Knowing what the Scarlet's plan was seems a bit disingenuous to, to me. And I, I think something's gone Something's gone on behind the scenes that we're never going to know about. But there's going to be ructions somewhere. But, you know, to bring it back to the point, let's get it out in the open and talk about it, boys, because it's not doing anybody any favours at all to have this behind closed doors. Exactly. And even if they had brought this out there, Major, the wording is pretty clear. It's the WRU league structure, not the WRU premiership. They they mm. could have put them down. The, they could have dropped a few divisions like some clubs have, and just fielded totally amateur players just mm. to keep that going, so they'd have the option this year. Yeah, I mean, whether or not this was always the plan, and you know, people that weren't privy to it were told, you know, zip up tight because we want to use the Queensland Flanderbury. We've got a team in Tlaxi. It's the Scarlets. We just want to keep it that way. Mm. So it's. It's frustrating, you know. Uh, obviously, not so much for you, be it not being a a, a true born Turk. You are part Turk. <laughs> Scarlets are part Turk, so you are kind of stuck with that a little bit. But uh, for, for me, it's, for someone who is a Flaherty fan, I I am I'm, mm. I'm quite devastated by this. And until I get a confirmation to know exactly what's happening, I'm I'm I'm, I'm losing my mind a little bit thinking about mm. this. But I think that's it, in it. You know, a lot of Scarlets fans are also Slechley fans. And, you know, there is no getting away from the fact that the Scarlets are based in Slechley. So that's a natural kind of connection. So for me, the better connection would be for Slechley to start developing itself as a club again and, and, and really find. You know, we talk a lot about heritage in West Wales. We talk a lot about connecting to our roots and, and things like that, and rightly so. But maybe Llanelli as a club has lost that. Do you know what I mean? Maybe the 
with the professionalism and the scarlets and, and the focus has all been on the scarlets and producing the scarlet side and producing essentially a feeder side for the scarlets, which in all honesty, Clandebury and um Kamad and Quinns have developed more players for the Scarlets than Clethley The the players that have dropped down to Clethley have been, let's say, um academy players or players coming back from injury. So we we'll, I think I think the best thing for Clethley is is yeah, build from the bottom again. And I, I I genuinely don't think it'll take too long. Um, but it takes commitment and effort. And I think there are enough supporters inside Clethley, you know, inside Clethley Town to make that happen. And you know, the the reality is is that Clethley Scarlets, you know, the Scarlets and Clethley are competing against big cities with massive amounts of money. So we, we, we can't turn around and say the Scarlets can be just Clethley because Clethley isn't big enough. It, it it needs all of West Wales to support that club, you know, and that's that's kind of what we're trying to do with the pod is is, is to spread that love around Pembrokeshire and Ceredigion and 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 bring people into the Scarlets and connect them with the Scarlets, but yeah, from from a Clenetley point of view, it's go and rebuild, it's go go and be a club again, for me. Anyway, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm with you 100 percent on that. So that's the doldrums for today. So, <laughs> we said it was okay to talk about negative stuff. It's okay to get that out in the air. I feel better now. Do you feel better, Mark? Yeah, my, I, I've uplifted my soul a little bit now. Okay. I'm going to bring you right back down to earth then. Tell me about the Dragons game. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> yeah. I, I honestly, I, I, I don't know what happened in that game. It was... Especially coming off knowing it's the same team as we had, more or less the same team we had against the Barbars, and they were pretty impressive. Hmm. Gore and okay, I know it's the Dragons, and we do have a bit of a they are a bit of a bogey team of ours. To to lose to them when you know we put out a side like that was was disheartening. Like overall, it it was a pretty poor performance. I mean, there was the the boys lacked intensity. I, I don't know if that's because they had their mind elsewhere or whatever, but th- there's no excuse. You know, these are professional players. If you can't bring it up to your level in a friendly game, you 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 don't deserve to have that chance to bring it up in a proper game. You know, so mm-hmm. if, if we look at the basics, we conceded five tries. You know, two of them were from, I, I know he was inside of 22, but two of them were from first phase on a scrum. So that that's very worrying for me. You know, you you don't go concede in first phase tries, mm. you know, unless it's a very, very well done move, which I can honestly say those two weren't. Uh, driving mall, we we should be defending these, and we've got a brand new forwards coach in Vandenberg, who let's be honest, he is a specialist in this area, and he comes with a lot of pedigree, so to see. A driving mall go over a line from the Dragons. I'm mm. quite disappointed in that. And then the two intercept tries that we conceded. Now, at first, I thought they were both Charlie Titcombe. So I was like, oh, okay, he's a young lad. Um, you know, he's learning his way, maybe a bit of experience, and that, that won't happen again. But on uh, watching it back, they were both the own line. So uh, I don't know if he was trying too hard. But they were both incredibly similar. You know, you, you can see with the, the, the rush defence the Dragons were playing, they were running into the passing channels. He, he He's a good number 10. He's got a lot of potential. But they shouldn't be happening. Uh, mm. and I would stagger a oh. guess. <laughs> That's my own fault. I would stagger a guess. And say that we won't see another intercept try from you know Johan Lloyd for the rest of the season because I think you know he's gonna yeah, beat himself up over that. I know mm. he's he's they caught they were the game. I know it's a preseason and it doesn't matter, but a win builds momentum and yeah. those two but, intercepts don't happen. We've got to win. We've got a bit of momentum, especially going to South Africa. 
especially now losing another scrum mm. So it's, it's it's a tough one to take, but it's it's a friendly. Let's hope this is the only loss we have to the Dragons this year. Mm. So talking about pre, um, getting ready for the season, then where are we with scrum offs? Because Archie Hughes is still injured, my understanding. Okay, and... Archie. Archie's on his return to play. He should be fit and firing for South Africa. He's right, tra- he's okay. training fine as far as we know. He's just going through the protocols. Right. Okay. So at least we'll have two scrum halves. That's... <laughs> I I think the the thing for me now is yeah you almost got to put it out of your mind and and disregard it and go right okay let's let's go play with the big boys. Um. I, I I can't see any other way around it. I say we we recruited well in terms of coaches. Uh, we recruited well where other people were not recruiting. You know, we we recruited some decent names. You know, Plumtree, you know, Lloyd, um, Tickham. You know, th- th- these are players that have a, a high expectation and a high threshold. Um, so yeah, just seeing the result of that game was a bit of a pain in the ass and and. It's got to come better. It, they, they, we, we cannot start this season the way we started last season. You know, no, we, we can't. Not even close. Like We're going to go into a, a nice little preview next week. But mm. we're, go, we're going to South Africa first. It's going to be difficult. I mean, we, we, can, afford, we can probably afford to say these two games are not write-offs as such, but they are more important for developing... The, the team again, they might a bit more yeah. match fit than that. Again, I'm going. See, but... I, I I go the other way. I go no. Nah. Oh no, I'm, we, I'm not we, happy about we it. We got yeah, we go out there to to win. And to me, whether it's South Africa or Newport, we we go with the same mentality. We go with the same style of play, and we front up. And I think that's the bit that's been missing. I think we got. A couple of players there that are there on reputation. They survived the chop from the end of last season and actually need to start performing. You know, I think I think that's that that's what it comes down to. It comes down to, you know, like you say, maybe the the mentality that the the headspace wasn't there on Saturday and oh, it Friday last weekend. And actually, now we need to. That needs to be a big switch on. And what, what I will say is the last couple of years when we've gone to South Africa, we've either won or pushed them close. You know, even even when we yeah. were crap, we were were pushing them close because they spend that time together and I think the mindset is there. So, yeah. Like I said, we'll cover that next week. Cover that next week. It's, yeah. Okay, so, Fletley, crap. Dragons, crap. Let's talk about fixtures for the weekend. <laughs> the lower well, this is something I can get in on. So uh, <laughs> let me just pull up. Go on, you go for let it. Let me pull up. Yeah, yeah you I'm gonna focus through I'm gonna the get sauce. My little... Yeah, we. I love a bit of sauce, man. You know that. Um, <laughs> no, this is this is my favorite. This is my favorite part of the week. Whenever we get, like, I know we haven't done it as much lately, which it hurts mm. my heart. It really does me, you know, and I'm blaming you for this. <laughs> I, I I love my club rugby where you know, whether it's division six, East Central, or it's the Premiership, every part of it I absolutely love. Mm-hmm. So we ready? Yeah, go on. You you do Sosman and I'll try and look like I I know where all of these sides mm-hmm. are because I am still <laughs> uh head in the clouds with some of these sides, particularly when we get You've got down a I don't mean shit, mate. Yeah. <laughs> still, some of these things, I'm still like, I can't work out which one of them uh, belongs to us. Right, go on. Off you go. Okay, we'll start in the Premiership. May as well go top to bottom. Why not? Uh, Carmarthen Quinns have got a bye this week, courtesy of the 13-team Premiership. Van Devry are playing Thursday night, which is tonight. They are away in Ebu Vale. So both sides, you know, they've both won their last three games. So this is going to be, you know, a, a Titanic clash. But I, I'm going to say the the draw was well. The draw was going to be undefeated all season. They're going to win everything that they possibly can. That's that's my uh, prediction for the season. So I'm not going to say a comfortable win, but I'm going to say uh, a composed win for Van Dubry tonight. 
Okay, fair enough. Okay, I'm moving it. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna even try to expose on uh, uh, East, mate. So you you carry on. I'm just gonna agree no, with no, whatever no. you say. <laughs> yeah. So we got Lee the yes man. Lee is the yes man today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, championship, championship West now, and for for us we've got Ammonford against Chabanos. Both sides looking pretty lowly. You now both only only I got one win recently. So I'm I'm hoping home advantage for Ammonford will put them over the line, and then we've got Sanganis traveling to Tardar Steel. Now Sanganis is playing high, barring they uh lost the break and which could have quite easily been a win. You know they they should be uh, you know undefeated and Tartar as we know they <laughs> they've been the whipping boys for for a little while now so that's going to be a nice comfortable Sanganis win into Division One West. And only the one game due to a lot of clubs postponing and moving the fixtures to another day due to the Wales or Argentina game. There's just Messi Wanderers at home to an eyelid. If that's how you even say it, I know we're going to go through this quite a few times this season. <laughs> but um, Messi Wanderers are having an absolutely amazing season. I did not expect this from them. You know, they're, they're flying high, and I'm, I'm going to, even though. Uh, the opponents, I'm not going to say the name again, uh, are, are doing pretty well themselves. Are you, I'm going to back Lefty Wanderers at home. Into oh. One West Central, uh, Bryn Arman at home to Glenith. It was a it was a torrid time in this fixture last year. Glenith, you know, put 53 points over Bryn Arman. So anything except for a uh, a massive loss would probably be really encouraging here. So you know. Let's try and keep it a one score. Let's hope Bernam and get a losing bonus point, or they can surprise us all and get the win. Down in two west, we've got a. I think we've got a full round of fixtures in two west. Looks we've like got, it, yeah. Yeah, Carmarthen Athletic v St Clair's. This is a, a new fixture for the season because of uh, St Clair's promotion. So it's going to be interesting to see where this one comes out. Probably going to say St Clair's on current form. I'd like to say Carmarthen Athletic because they're my team. But uh, no, I can see St. Clair's doing this. Lampeter and Tembi in another new one. Lampeter coming up again. Uh, Tembi just seem really strong again this season. Lampeter having a good show of it. But I'm thinking Tembi again are too strong. Then we got Milford Haven at home to Ammon United. Um, Ammon really haven't started this season proper yet. I I know a lot of the boys did the ten B I and man, and I think they must slowly be integrating because to have so many boys at those fitness levels, you'd expect them to be doing pretty well in a in Division Two. But I, I'm still going to back Armand to do a, a number over Milford. Uh, Nankere they come to Ponteberrim. You know, Ponteberrim. I think Ponteberrim got their first win. Or was it no? They got a draw recently, so they've got uh, they've avoided a full season whitewash. They only got the one win last year, so, but I, I can't see anything outside of a Nankaredig win on this one. And to Kreis at home to Locher in the last game of two West, tight, tight game last year, 17 10 to, to Kreis. I'm, I'm gonna say it's gonna be pretty much the same, gonna back to Kreis as a home team, but. It, this is going to be a very difficult game and we all know how physical Lucker can be. Now we go into 3 West B and we've just got the two games to talk about. So uh, the first one is Furness at home to Sandilo. You know, Furness are having a pretty decent season so far and I, I'm I'm happy to say that. They won this fixture last year, 27-25. I think they're going to do a little bit better this year. I think Furness are going to uh, win by at least a clear score. Uh, in our second game, it's a, a heavyweight game. This is Tumble and Trim Saran. Now, Trim Saran missed out on promotion last season. Tumble won the league the year before. So, you know, these are two sides that have been chomping at the bit to get up for a while. Uh, Trim Saran have been a bit down as of late which uh, is, is a little bit unfortunate. You know, I, I was expecting them to really, really be at the top all the way through it. So I'm I'm gonna back Tumble to 
do the job when I'm at home. Into uh, Five West Central, the last of our senior men's. Uh, just two fixtures again. We've got Penny Bank travelling to Fall Bay. You know, it's, it's difficult in these lower leagues. I don't know enough of them. There's not enough put everywhere. But I'm I'm going to back Penny Bank to, to do this on the road. They've done it last season, 26-13. So I'm going to back them to do it again. And then we got Ty Bach against Pont Yates. I backed Pont Yates at the start of the season to, to do something amazing and win this league. They have not been helping me at all with their performances. But uh, I'm going to back Pont Yates again. And hopefully they will come up with a victory for the for me this week. Uh, into the youth leagues now. We've got Carmarthen Athletic at home to Penny Bank. Carmarthen Quinns at home to Llangenech. Lampeter and Llandilo, Newcastle Emlyn and Tumble. And then the last one in Carmarthenshire Youth League is St. Clair's against Kidwelly. And this is now a vital, vital week in the uh, Scarlet's region Dewar Shield competition. We've basically got an all or nothing final to play in this first game. We've got Manid Maur and Dinevur at home against Carmarthen Schools. Uh, MMAD a three from three, Carmarthen two from two. Whoever wins this game are going to be going through to the Dewey Shield semi-finals. So this is really a really big game for both sides. Friday night, Mike Gwen right field. I think it's a 7.30 kickoff. So if you're in and around the area, get down there, watch these boys, because these are the stars of tomorrow and it's going to be a, a cracking game. And then the other one in the Dewey Shield is Pembrokeshire against Ceredigion. Yes, it is, which is tonight. I'm, I'm sure I saw a, a post of that tonight. Okay, are you done? Because that's a lot, mate. It's a lot of... <laughs> yeah, it, it, is, it is a lot. I've, I've got a lot of sides in mind. Yeah. And, you know, I, I've taken on the extra mantle of banging in the youth league <laughs> and making sure I keep up with the Dewar Shield as well. Because, mm. you know, there's, there's not, people don't get this news. I mean, you get, you get a minor snippet in maybe... The Western Mail of, of a youth league, or you know, whatever county you're in, they're on the leader or whatever. Mm. You you get little snippets of these youth games, but you you don't know. So I I want to get them out there, and I will be working on getting the Pembrokeshire League in as well. So you'll have extra games. So don't you worry about that. I don't think we have Pembrokeshire League uh, youth. I think I think the you youth do. setup is yeah, but I think the youth setup in Pembrokeshire is so scratchy at the minute. You know, there, there aren't really enough teams to say. You know, oh, you you've, got, you've got a to... good few in there. I have, I have been, fo- I have been slowly following it. I have managed yeah. to put everything down on paper, but you know, it's, it's surprising. What well, quite, I, I, you, I know the land mass is quite large, but population wise, it's quite a small area, and you know, you've mm. got quite a lot of youth teams, so that's impressive. Well, before I pick off and do fixtures in Westeros Bestro, I just want to give a shout out to the um, All Wales Sport, which for for those that don't know what All Wales Sport is, it's a, it's a website and that's where we get pretty much most of our fixtures and most of our scores from. Um, and then we supplement that with some of the stuff that we see on social media and whatever. Just to say that that this weekend, fix, uh, kickoff times, it just all over the shop because of the um the World Cup, which the WIU have have enabled. They said, you know, it's it's up to you what you want to do this weekend. If you want to play and have an early kickoff, or you would like to play Friday night or whatever, or if you want to postpone the game, then you can. So, um, yeah, if you've got any questions or queries, all way your sport is always a good place to go to find kickoff times and all of that all your social media channels and we will do our best to update scores on our uh, well, update kickoff times on the social media channels going into this weekend just because it's it's going to be a bit of a nightmare so two sources of information to check your kickoff times i haven't seen anyone yet kicking off at half two <laughs> <laughs> uh like, if they haven't got a time next to it, it's assumed it's half past two. So yeah, I can't uh, see. I, I can't anything. imagine many teams doing now with a four o'clock quarter final. No. But uh, and another another part for all wheel sport, they they do things for the youth and the junior rugby as well. So yeah, if definitely. you could ever look, if you uh if you got a boy in or girl 
in 12, 13, 14, 15, 16s, you know, pop on there more often than not. You'll see all the results. You'll see upcoming fixtures. There's, you know what clubs are like. They don't tend to prep you more than a week or two in advance. You can yeah. actually download the full fixture list of them. Yeah, really, really good. Okay, so let's have a look at Westra is Bestra then. So Championship West, we've got a massive game to start with. Krimach are hosting Narbeth. I mean, Narbeth are rightly top of the table-ish, um, with the exception of Brecon. So it's going to be a battle. It's going to be a bloodbath. Um, and I, 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 I want to go and see it. But as I've said many times before, Krimach's car parking is crap. So... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I would love to go and watch that game, but I, I know I won't. So I'm going to call that as an Arbeth win. I think that'll be great. Uh, then we've got Dunvant are uh, hosting Newcastle Emlyn. I think Newcastle Emlyn are having a great season, and I can see them winning that one. So that's two away wins in the Championship West. Uh, so coming down Division 1 West, Whitland are playing away in Gowerton. That's confirmed as a half-one kickoff. I can't see Whitland doing anything up there, I'll be honest. Uh, Aberyst with travelling to Penclough. Um, yeah, mm, ooh, ooh, I'm torn. I'm torn. I, I reckon Aberyst with my Abbott one. Yeah, this is a difficult one because Aberyst with have barely played. Uh, yeah. I mean, they've only played one league fixture. You, you'd have thought they'd be beating Penclough, but yeah, they you just... don't know what Aberyst with team we've got right now. Hmm. And if they're relying on students, um, most of the students I know actually want to go and watch the game. So that would have to be a very early kickoff to make a, a, that one a viable game. Uh, Division 2 West, you've covered most of these, but I'm going to yeah. disagree with you in the uh, the results. So St. Clair's will beat Carmarthen Athletic. I agree with you on that one. Uh, Fishguard hosted Mumbles. Yeah, I think Fishguard will, will may hey. scrape on there. I think they'll be okay. Fishguard, Fishguard have been absolutely awesome this season. Three from three, maximum points. I, I, I know the fixtures mm. have been kind. Yeah. But, mm. you know, you've still got to beat what's in front of you. So, you know, well yeah. done, like. Yeah. And uh, a big shout out. Now, this is not a coincidence that um friend of the show, Chris Susha, has been out with an injured knee and he's had his operation on his ACL and he's on his way back. He, he's had his off this week. So I know he listens every now and again. So hello, Sush. Hope you're getting well, mate. Um, so, yeah, it's not a coincidence that Sush isn't playing and all of a sudden Fish got are doing really, really well. I'm not going to connect those two, mate. You you, you, you crack on. So, um, yeah, Tenby, Lampeter, I think that's a Tenby win. Uh, Milford, Ammon, like you say, I think that'll be a really close game. Um, and I don't know which way to call that. So I, I'm, I'm going to call that as a Milford home win just because it's a home win uh, and for no other reason than, than that. So let's have a look at Division 3. Um, there's only three fixtures that are definitely going ahead. Langham... Uh, our host in Nayland. So there's a grand total of about four miles in between those two grounds. So I can see why that game's going ahead. Uh, neither team are having a great start to the season, but I can just see Nayland bullying their way through that one. Uh, what? Uh, and, uh, yeah. No. yeah. No, you can't do that. Like, yeah. You win every single game. They're not oh. losing another one for the rest of the year. They're going to do yeah. it. If you say so, pretty boy. <laughs> oh, pretty boy, I like that. Yeah, no, I, I, I think they will win that one. Um, the interesting game uh, is Cardigan and Pembroke, which it doesn't say there's an altered kickoff time, but I think they must be because it's it's a good hour away. Um, Cardigan are doing well this year. Pembroke started off very well. Um, did a bonus pod last week with Darren Gilbert, the uh, backs coach for Pembroke. Uh, gave us a good insight into the what's going on at, uh, at Crick Marin. So I'm actually going to go with a Pembroke win on that one, just because, uh, uh, yeah, because hopefully I can get a couple of free beers when I eventually <laughs> go back up the club. No, uh, um, obviously Pembroke coming back into this league was, uh, was a shock for most hmm. people. But, um, you know, I, I was expecting them to run riot right from the start. But, you know, losing at home to Haverford West, 
You know, mm. I, I I think it's just a normal a normal Division Three West A team. So I'm I'm gonna say Cardiff are gonna gonna do it. Well, uh, say have a listen to the the bonus pod from last week, and Gilbert will give you a a, a load of stuff from what's happened and all that kind of stuff. But I'm gonna stick with a Pembroke win. Uh, and then the final fixture is Pembroke Doc Quinns hosting Flanner Brother. I think that should be quite an easy win for the Quinns, particularly at home. Um, and then a very good time will be had by all watching the game after that much. Uh, I know, regardless of what the score is, there'll be a, a, a very good time had by all. And then, like you said, Jewish Shield, Pembrokeshire against Kev Diggian tonight. Um, yeah. Pembroke's are just not firing this year, which is strange because they've had a lot of good players come through, um, but it's just not firing. And yeah, and, should and be. these are these are the same boys from last year because of the change in age. So it's mm. it's a surprise not to see. I've seen them kick on a bit. I, I'll, I'll say that everyone else has kicked on a bit more than them instead yeah. of they have kicked on. But mm. uh, I was I was expecting them to maybe get into the plate this time around. Buzz, they done awesome in the bowl last year. Yeah, but there we go. So that's our rundown done and a little bit of a chat about the Dragons and a little bit of chat about Clenetley. Not bad, mate. Not bad. Not bad. I mean, yeah, it could be better. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, all the stuff about the internationals and all of that is on our main pod, uh, or you can listen to the rap pod as well. And we will be putting this out on YouTube once I get through my stack of <laughs> YouTube videos to, to upload. Yeah, uh, let me let me just make. I should have made sure my hair was right before I started. You know, I got a <laughs> hot enough, You know, I got a like yeah. a, a mate called me Castro Giovanni. You know, so I'm, I'm trying to get yeah. old, don't I? Yeah, myself okay. look, look the past. Yeah. I can see the look, mate. I can see the cast of Giovanni. That's that's it. Yeah. Right, yeah. Matt. Uh, all the best, mate. I will catch up with you again next week for a pre-season rundown with Scarlet's Fever. Looking forward to that one already. Yeah, massive, massive URC preview. I can't wait. Yeah. All the best, mate. See you next week. All the best to you. Thank you very much. Travel. Bye, mate.